everyone. Welcome to today's session for Mitochondrial Disease Awareness Week. Mitochondrial disorders are largely misdiagnosed or underdiagnosed due to their clinical and genetic heterogeneity. Therefore, there is a pressing need for raising general awareness regarding these disorders. For today's session, we have with us Ms. Vishu Gupta. She has completed her bachelor's in biochemistry and master's in genetics from University of Delhi and she is currently a senior research fellow at CSIR Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. Her research is primarily focused on understanding the genomics of mitochondrial disorders. Today, she will share with us some insights about these disorders. We welcome Ms. Vishu Gupta. Over to you, Ms. Vishu. Thank you, Swasti, for the kind introduction. Hello, and welcome all to this session on mitochondria and diseases. We all know that human body is made up of various organs and tissues and these organs and tissues are in turn made up of the cell which is the basic unit of life. Cell contains several organelles which have the dedicated tasks to perform and one of the most important organelles is mitochondria because it provides the energy to all the cells and all the organs and tissues inside a human body to perform their function. Now, if we look back at the uh, discovery of mitochondria, long back, 100, around 100 years ago in 1890s, Richard Altman has observed the ubiquitous uh, occurrence of these structures and he named them as bioblast. Also, he concluded that these organelles could be the elementary organisms. Later, eight years, uh, in 1898, Carl Bender gave the name of mitochondrion to these organ, organelles and this was because, the, because of the appearance of these structures inside the cell. So, if we look, look at the mitochondria, it gives us the energy and most of the energy, that is 90% of the energy that our body needs to perform each and every task in day-to-day -day life, be it eating, walking, standing, bathing or even holding objects is provided by mitochondria. So it is very, very important organ. Now, if we look back at the origin of mitochondria, we all know that as per the endosome point theory, it has been said that there was a protobacterial ancestor which was engulfed by a eukaryotic cell and has now evolved into a mitochondria. Now, during the process of evolution, Many of the genes have been lost and many of the genes from this uh, proteobacterial ancestor have been transferred to the nucleus. And the current day mitochondria possess 37 such genes. Now, if we look at the structure of mitochondria, so it is a double membrane bound organelle with the outer and the inner membrane, which is around 0.5 to 3 microns in size. And also the mitochondria is uh, having several infoldings in the inner membrane which are known as cristae. So these are very important uh, as these increase the surface area of the inner membrane. Also mitochondria has a very rich matrix of DNA, proteins and other small molecules. So mitochondria is known as the semi-autonomous organelle. This is because it has its own genome and also it is dependent upon the nuclear genome for variety of its functions. Now, if we look at, there is a very uh, good kind of nuclear mitochondrial crosstalk that occurs inside a cell, which allows mitochondria to perform majority of its tasks. So, uh, mitocarta, which is a, a database of all the nuclear proteins which are going inside the mitochondria, has reported that there are more than 1000 proteins which are going from nucleus to mitochondria to allow mitochondria to perform its function. Hence, it is a semi-autonomous organ. Now, if we look at the genome of mitochondria, it's a circular genome, which is around 16,000 KB uh, in size. And it is made up of two strands, the light and the heavy strand, that is based upon the GC content of the two strands. Now, um, we know that mitochondria has uh, codes, more mitochondrial genome codes for 37 genes, out of which 13 are protein coding, 22 are tRNAs, and 2 are rRNAs. Uh, also, there are no introns in mitochondria, and there is one uh, or two known coding, known coding regions. Uh, one is known as the D loop, and another one is uh, hair, which is having the origin of 
replication of the light strand and we know that mitochondria follows uniparental inheritance and humans it is mostly from the maternal side and uh, each mitochondria carries such dna molecules uh, ranging from 2 to 10 and that depends upon the type of the cell now since there are more than one type of uh, one dna molecule inside a mitochondria and there are many mitochondria inside a cell the variations that exist in case of mitochondria mitochondrial genome exist in the uh, level a in a certain level so that level of the mutant uh, load inside a cell of variant mitochondria variant mitochondrial genome is known as the heteroplasmy so the variations exist in two forms either homoplasmic or they could be having some percentage of they could be present in some percentage of heteroplasmy now if you look at the various functions of mitochondria one of the major function is the oxidative phosphorylation through which mitochondrial generates the uh, ATP, which are the energy currency of the cell. And uh, another major function is uh, apoptosis. So mitochondria plays a very vital role in case of apoptosis. Uh, apart from this, uh, mitochondria plays a role in calcium homeostasis also by uh, controlling the movement of calcium inside and outside of the mitochondria. And uh, additionally, mitochondria performs the task of beta oxidation of fatty acids through which it also generates energies. And um, apart from this, it is very well known that mitochondria is involved in, a, uh, in TCA cycle uh, whose intermediates are uh, funneled to the oxidative phosphorylation. And mitochondria perform its own replication, transcription and translation. Also, the, there are several proteins which are imported into the mitochondria through the help of uh, some intermembrane, some um, membrane, intermembrane proteins like TIM and TOM. Also, there is a very good maintenance of redox potential inside mitochondria through uh, redox reactions. So, uh, if there is any dysfunction or if any of the function uh, fails to perform, then there is a range of acute or chronic diseases that might occur, which are called as mitochondrial disorders. Now, let us look at how the mitochondrial disorders were discovered. Now, long back in 1962, a 35-year-old woman with hypermetabolism was presented. And all the known causes of hypermetabolism and the other symptoms that she presented uh, were checked. And it was found that hyperthyroid uh, hyperfunction, extrathyroidal causes, chronic intoxication, chronic salicylate intoxication, and various other uh, causes were excluded. Then the scientists discovered that there was something abnormal or there is abnormal morphology of the mitochondria inside the isolated muscles of that woman. Also, this was supported by the biochemical findings, which showed that there is some loose coupling of the oxidation and phosphorylation in the muscle mitochondria. And uh, finally, this was uh, confirmed by the clinical correlations, that is, uh, between correlation between the clinical features and the biochemical finding, uh, which hinted strongly towards this being a mitochondrial disorder. So Rolf Luft has discovered this uh, mitochondrial uh, disorder uh, in 1962. And now he is known as the father of mitochondrial medicine. So uh, this statement of him shows uh, that, says that, that this disorder was uh, like never, the symptoms of this disorder were never seen before. So it was quite striking. And uh, this could lead to the studies on this organism, on this organelle, which is mitochondria. Uh, so, if we look at mitochondrial disorders in detail, we, we know that mitochondrial disorders are clinically and genetically heterogeneous group of disorders. And this is because there are a lot of overlapping symptoms and a lot of genetic causes which can lead to mitochondrial disorders. For example, mutations in um, any of the genes in mitochondrial or there are more than 1000 nuclear genes known for mitochondrial function. So mutations in these genes can lead to mitochondrial disorders. Also, the mitochondrial disorders, because of this dual genetic control, can follow any mode of inheritance, uh, be it recessive, dominant, or maternal mode also. 
also the very uh, age of onset in case of men, uh, mitochondrial disorders ob is observed to be variable uh, this could occur at the pediatric population also and in the adult population also uh, also the uh, another heterogeneity is that the mitochondrial disorders can have uh, single organ involvement or multiple organs could be involved in various diseases uh, if we look at the organ systems that are involved in case of mitochondrial disorders, so it ranges from eyes, ears, lungs, kidneys, digestive system, brain, heart, and skeletal muscle. A lot of other organs like liver and speech could also be affected in case of mitochondrial disorders. And uh, mostly the high energy demanding tissues like the brain, heart, and skeletal muscle are the ones which manifest and show the symptoms of mitochondrial disorders because these tissues require the functioning of uh, because these tissues are very high energy demanding and they require proper functioning of mitochondria to perform their tasks now uh, what are the types of mitochondrial disorders so uh, there are many many types of mitochondrial disorders and broadly these could be classified into three categories so first is uh, isolated complex deficiencies. So uh, the major function of mitochondria is the production of ATP. And uh, if we look at that, uh, there is any deficiency in any of the structural subunit or the assembly factors of these complexes, uh, any of the five complexes, then it could lead to the isolated complex deficiency. For example, complex deficiency one, four, three, two, and so on. But if there are multiple uh, if there are mutations or changes in proteins which are involved in the replication or transcription or the maintenance of the mitochondrial DNA, then these could lead to uh, com uh, combined oxidative phosphorylation, multiple oxidative phosphorylation defects because the mitochondrial genome codes for many proteins which are involved in the electron transport chain. So if that is not properly happening, the replication or the transcription, then these proteins would not be made. Uh, and there are several other defects which could be occurring due to the B, B, uh, due to the mutations in genes involved in beta oxidation of fatty acids, enzymes of TCA cycle, or uh, several transporter proteins. Uh, so here are a few examples of the mitochondrial disorders. Uh, if you look at the isolated, uh, sorry, if you look at the oxidative phosphorylation, so the uh, defects in this could lead to isolated complex deficiencies, leak syndrome, etc. And if we look at uh, defects in mitochondrial DNA maintenance, then there are uh, diseases like MELAS or Lee, which could occur, CPEO also, which occurs due to uh, Paul G mutation, which is a very important gene involved in uh, mitochondrial DNA replication. Also, if we look at um, the protein import uh, pathway, so combined oxidative phosphorylation deficiencies could be uh, could happen in if there is any mutation in these proteins, uh, followed by many other diseases due to beta oxidation of fatty acids and uh, changes in beta oxidation of fatty acids, also changes in calcium homeostasis, and also if there are any changes or uh, protein defects in the pathway of apoptosis, uh, then it could lead to syndromes like Coucher. So, uh, one of the most common disorder that is the Leak syndrome is which is a subacute necroti necrotizing encephalopathy occurs due to mutations in more than 75 genes in either the mitochondrial or the nuclear genome the estimated prevalence of leak syndrome is one per 40000 individuals and uh, this was estimated in year 1996 and if we look at the clinical features of this uh, syndrome, they range from uh, like uh, pediatric, uh, they range from infants having short head, uh, hypertrichosis, and weakness of the limbs, and several other organs are also involved in case of leak syndrome. Also, if you look at the radiological features, so this is a typical MRI showing the lesions in uh, globus pallidus. So, this is a uh, typical MRI of uh, leak syndrome. Also, we can see that there is on MRS spectroscopy, there is a, a, a inverted lactate peak, which also depicts that there is dysfunctional mitochondria. So uh, if we look at the prevalence of mitochondrial overall, there are one in 4,300 individuals uh, in 
a study which was done from north east of england by government at all in 2015 and as per umdf every 30 minutes in uh, a child is born with a mitochondrial disease or or a child who will develop a mitochondrial disease by the age of 10 so the situation is quite uh, difficult to handle now how do we diagnose the mitochondrial disorder so there are various uh, traditional ways of diagnosing mitochondrial disorders one of those is the clinical uh, in which the clinician looks at the symptoms of or the clinically examines the patient another one is biochemical in which the levels of various organic acids or enzymes are uh, like tested in body fluids like blood urine etc also there is uh, there are tests which are uh, done by taking the biopsies and doing some uh, histological uh, uh, estimate histological investigations for example the presence of rag bread fibers cox fibers on all the uh, all the others and on the basis of these uh, uh, initial uh, investigations there are few points uh, which are given and there is a very uh, there is a diagnostic criteria given by morava uh, in 2006 which shows that these these are the scores that could be given to each of the symptom that ha- that is observed and uh, this is also on the basis of the imaging and the metabolic studies that we performed here now if the total score of this individual is between 8 to 12 then that could lead that could uh, show that there is a definitive mitochondrial disorder followed by the score of 5 to 7 which says that there is a probable mitochondrial disorder and if the score is around 2 to 4 then it could be possibly mitochondrial disorder and so on and uh, as per umdf if there are three plus uh, malfunctioning organ systems then that is a red flag for mitochondrial disorders but there is there are several limitations to these uh, type of diagnostic techniques for example these tests are not very highly specific for example the red red fibers could be seen in various other disorders also and these techniques are invasive for example uh, the histological techniques they require muscle biopsies sometimes which is very very invasive for the patient and uh, or, uh, and using these diagnostic techniques there was a survey in us uh, which says that on an average a, cl- a patient sees 8.19 clinicians before even uh, arriving at the diagnosis of mitochondrial disease so we can say that the diagnostic odyssey is quite complex and burdensome in case of mitochondrial disorders here we require the genetic diagnosis which is uh, quite confirmatory and definitive diagnosis of uh, any uh, genetic disease like mitochondrial disorders so these there are several advantages of genetic diagnosis like it is less invasive also the diagnostic yields have been reported from, uh, from ranging from 35 to 70% the ad- uh, additional advantage of genetic diagnosis is that uh, it leads to the discovery of new genes and variants which are involved in uh, mitochondrial disorders so uh, as we can see in this uh, chart it, after 2010 uh, increase in the number of the new genes has been very very steep and also uh, genetic diagnosis has additional advantages like this uh, it it could help in the targeted treatment of the mitochondrial disorders and also it could help in ass- assessing the risk for recurrence in families because if we know the gene that is involved we will know the inheritance pattern and hence we can assess the risk of recurrence in the families uh, now if we look back at major breakthroughs that have occurred in mitochondrial medicine field so uh, first uh, which has led to the current uh, genetic diagnostic technique so initially in 1980s mitochondrial dna was sequenced followed by uh, the identification of first mutation in mitochondrial dna in uh, 1988 and this was then followed by uh, then uh, development of cytoplasmic hybrids uh, which help in determining the pathogenic mechanism of these uh, variation uh, then in 1995 first nuclear gene mutation uh, which was involved in leak syndrome was identified and then another uh, nuclear gene mutation which in uh, assembly factor was identified in 1998 this was followed by uh, 
cataloging of more than 1000 nuclear genes in uh, by 2010 now after the uh, advent of ngs in 2000 uh, after 2010 there has been a rapid increase and uh, the advancements are running at a very high pace in which more than 300 nuclear genes have been implicated in mitochondrial disorders and all the 37 mitochondrial genes have also been shown to be implicated now uh, after the uh, advancement in the diagnosis there is a steep rise in the field of treatment of mitochondrial disorders so uh, edibinon which is an uh, analog of coenzyme q10 has been Uh, uh approved for treatment of leon disease which is a single cis, uh, organ involvement involved disease uh, causing the vision loss now this uh, increase in the advancements on diagnostic techniques using genetic diagnosis gives us some hope that yes in future there could be a treatment and we we are now following going towards the precision medicine as a part of the program uh, here at igib which is known as guardian we are uh, taking up the patients uh, suffering from such uh, rare diseases like mitochondria and uh, the criteria for inclusion includes the uh, sampling of the trio mother father and the proband also uh, the clinical report we uh, clinical report is required followed uh, with a consent of all the individuals for sequencing the sample so this project has been funded by csr and the lead, uh, lead organization uh, is uh, igib uh, under this project we take up the sample from the clinicians which are uh, of several undiagnosed diseases like mitochondria which is followed by genome sequencing and analysis of the reports of the uh, patients and if we find uh, some known pathogenic variant we clini- uh, directly report it to the clinician however if there are novel mutations identified or novel genes identified then these are taken up uh, on research basis and uh, to uh, for performing the functional assays and so uh, under this project we are currently taking up mitochondrial uh, patients also and uh, we hope to make some changes in the landscape of mitochondrial disorders in india through this program so the technique that we are using currently for uh, genetic diagnosis involved the candidate gene sequencing wherein uh, the selected genes of the based upon the phenotype are sequenced however there are several limitations uh, that these this technique could be applied if we current, uh, clearly know the symptoms of the uh, genetic uh, symptoms of the disease and the underlying genetic cause also Uh, another technique that we follow is the whole exome sequencing wherein the only the coding regions of the genomes are uh, sequenced and this uh, has a, a limitation that the known coding regions or the large structural variations in uh, could be missed and to um, overcome this or to like follow up follow this up if there are any suspected non coding or structural variation a uh, whole genome sequencing is also performed in which whole mitochondrial and the whole nuclear genome is sequenced however there is limitation of the affordability and the accessibility for whole genome sequencing so to overcome this and to uh, like take off take uh, and to overcome this limitation we are currently working on uh, several uh, several uh, development of several assays which could be Uh, li- which could be cost effective affordable and also the turnaround time could be uh, low so that more and more patients and more and more uh, families could be benefited from the uh, analysis so uh, if we look at the uh, treatments of mitochondrial disorder so uh, sadly there is no cure or fda approved therapy which is available for mitochondrial disorders currently however there are few symptomatic treatments that can be uh, provided to patients like a mitochondrial cocktail could be provided with a combination of vitamins cofactors nutrients and several antioxidants also specific dietary restrictions could help for example a, a low carbohydrate uh, diet is suggested for patients with mitochondrial disorders uh, also the physical therapy uh, and uh, endurance exercises they also help uh, help in uh, like in 
relieving the symptoms of uh, mitochondrial disorders also uh, some analogs of uh, analogs like analog of coenzyme q10 that is edibanon these are quite uh, uh, like recently ha have been added to the list of treatment pharm pharmacological pharmacological agents used for treatment and the most uh, recent in the field that is the genome editing and gene therapy so uh, this uh, field of uh, genome editing and gene therapy has recently come up and we have seen we are seeing several clinical trials based on these for uh, several mitochondrial disorders one of the mitochondrial disorder for which a gene therapy is in uh, like very advanced stage is leon so we hope that in future uh, with the increasing genetic diagnosis with the increasing availability of genetic diagnosis we can uh, get better and better treatment for this patient uh, for the patients of mitochondrial disorders so with this i would like to uh, thank the uh, my principal investigator dr shridhar sivathubu and our very uh, close collaborator dr vinod tarya and all my lab mates uh, without whom we can we could not perform all the activities here at uh, uh, in our lab and i would also like to thank all the past uh, lab members of the ssb and vs lab and all the patients and families uh, through which we could understand the landscape of the mitochondrial disorders in india also uh, several uh, i would like to thank igib and all the funding agencies for providing the support uh, thank you all and let's remember all the patients and the families in this world mitochondrial disease week so thank you